The left quad soreness and Romeo Langford is out due to left adductor injury management. Shooting guard Devin Vassell will play in his sixth game since returning from a knee procedure. His rhythm isn't back yet, but Zach knows he'll find it. Yeah, I think he's done a good job. I mean, he, the kid works so hard, man. He's in here every day, off days. Um, you, you know, they got to pull him off the court. They got to kind of save him from himself because he wants it so bad. So he's, uh, he's doing great, man. And here's center Charles Bassey with his left leg in a soft cast after he suffered a non-displaced fracture in his left patella Tuesday night versus the Magic, and he is done for the season. Spurs and Grizzlies will play tonight at 7. Highlights on the night beat. KBD is questionable with left Achilles soreness. Turning to March Madness, number one Houston barely beat number 16 Northern Kentucky 63-52 last night in the first round of the Midwest region. The Norse were down three at halftime and made it 36 all with less than 16 minutes left in the game, but the Cougs found a way to survive and advance with their leading scorer Marcus Sasser riding the bench in the second half. Sasser started and he scored five points, but he aggravated a groin injury in the first half, so he was benched out of precaution. I would have been fine if Marcus had decided not to play uh, tonight, uh, but he wanted to give it a try because he thought he was at a high enough percentage of 100 that he could go. So obviously he didn't feel like he, he got out there and didn't feel like he could, so he shut it down, which is the right thing to do. With or without Sasser, number one Houston will next play number nine Auburn tomorrow night at 6-10. The Dallas Cowboys plan to re-sign backup quarterback Cooper Rush to a two-year deal with up to $6 million per reports. As for QB1, Dak Prescott, he's struggling with the fact the Cowboys released running back Ezekiel Elliott. Both of them were drafted by the boys in 2016. Yeah, tough. Uh, yeah, it really is. Uh, it's tough. Uh, a brother, uh, playing the game with a brother, being able to, 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 to start this NFL career, and uh, share share so many memories and um, grow up as men. Grow up as men uh, with, throughout the, with this organization. I really can't imagine taking the field without him. Uh, something I don't know if it's completely hit me yet. The NFL's all-time leading rusher and Cowboys great Emmitt Smith took to social media to criticize the boys for cutting Zeke, saying in part, "Wow, this is amazing to me." And the NFL stands for not for long. UTSA baseball is off to a great start as they get ready to open Conference USA play tonight. The Roadrunners are 15 and 3 overall and winners of seven straight. During that win streak, they have averaged 13.57 runs per game and produced 10 plus runs in five of those seven games. Lately, we've been hitting, but we've been pitching well all year. Yeah, so we can improve the defense. There's always room for improvement everywhere, but uh, you know, to answer your question, I like the pitching and uh, we're always hunting to get better. You know, we're feeling great. Obviously, 15-3 and three is a great way to start the year. You know, like every team, we probably feel like uh, those three losses, maybe we could have won those games too, you know, but I'm sure every team feels that way, that some of the losses could have gone could have gone a different way. But obviously, 15 wins in the first 18 games is something special, and so we're feeling fantastic to start the year for sure. UTSA is hosting Florida Atlantic in a three-game homestand, and game one is underway. Thank you very much. And after the break, we've got a nice treat for you. It's the weekend, and for a lot of people, spring break in San Antonio is going to be winding down, but doesn't mean that it's not going to be super busy. In fact, our favorite influencer is here with us, and she's going to talk to us about what's happening around the Alamo City. Get excited. Come on. It's Friday. It's the end of the week. Time to celebrate. It's St. Patty's Day. Lots of people are out there partying today, but there's so much going on this weekend. Yeah, there is a lot of fun to be had. Of course, spring break winding down. Yep. So we're going to talk about it all with our favorite influencer who joins us as you have been most Friday, Stephanie Guetta, whose account rhymes with Puro Flinche. That's what <laughs> we're still sticking go. with, right? I think you nailed it, Mina. Yeah, thank you so much. <laughs> I've been working on it for weeks. Okay, so first thing up. The Pachanga de San Patricio. Explain what that's all about. So obviously today is St. Patrick's Day, but at the Tobin tomorrow we'll be celebrating. There is a huge Irish-Mexican connection because mm -hmm. a lot of Irish people were in Mexico years ago as refugees. Um, and so they're celebrating Dia de San Patricio, mm -hmm. which is St. Patrick's Day in Spanish. Free folk, punk, rock music headlined by piñata protest. Um, we also have Angelica Ruiz, 
Declan McLaughlin, Los San Patricios, and we also have traditional Irish dancing going on at the Tobin Center, and it's free for everybody. Ooh, so free. a nice a nice little mix there. Yes. Also <laughs> happening tomorrow, we have the Cesar Chavez Art Days with some local artists, so tell us about that. I'm really excited about this. So um, this is a new thing for the Cesar Chavez Foundation here in San Antonio. They are having their Art Days at the Mission Marquee with local artist Rudy Herrera and the Masa Collective. Um, that's their real name. And so this is going to be actually like poster making, art making, and celebration and celebration in the spirit of Cesar Chavez leading up to the annual march that's right here in San Antonio next Saturday. Right. So you'll get two weekends and then tomorrow they're actually going to also screen the Cesar Chavez movie. So you can watch that for free out at the Mission Drive-In Theater. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun for everyone to get involved, get activated, and remember why we have the rights that we do today when it comes to labor and workers. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, <laughs> so maybe if you're not into St. Patty's Day or you're getting your fill today, there's something else happening, which I think sounds pretty cool. The Her Story Project. Yes. What is this about? So we're still in Women's History Month, That's right? Yes. Glad we're all here tonight. Um, and so local photographer Bria Woods, she is have, having her project, um, the Her Story Project, Chapter Three, and she's actually hosting a, a community storytelling event Saturday night at the Carver Community Center. So it's great because she has a lot of local women leaders, and this is based on how you find rest, right? We're always so busy, we're hustling, we're moving, we need to actually take care of ourselves um, physically, mentally, and find some rest so we can be creative and work and do all of those things. So she has an amazing photography and storytelling event. She is a local photographer for a, another muse, media outlet here in town, um, but I'm excited to see it. She's been having great events this year. She had chapter two last year, and she's an amazing budding photographist, photography student and actual journalist, sorry. She does all the things right here in San Antonio. <laughs> I love, she probably needs some rest like she the rest does. of us. Yes, she does, she does. I do, yeah. And we I love do. that, I love that already. I think we're already getting to that part in the year where you know, you're know you all energized when the year starts and then you go, yeah. oh, I'm tired. Now maybe it's because we've There's been with the kids more spring break. There's 11 more spring break. I know. This is a hard hard week for and, all of us. And that event, by the way, the, opens door, the, the doors open at five o'clock and the event itself starts at six o'clock. Yes, okay. yes. All right, so let's move on here because also we're not done with events that are happening tomorrow. We have the Lowrider Super Show at Freeman Coliseum. Yeah. All right. So I know San Antonio knows about this, right? Lowrider Magazine, it's been around for decades, big part of our culture here in San Antonio. I still love to see Lowriders cruising around town every weekend. So tomorrow there is an actual Super Show at the Freeman Coliseum. Paul Wall, he is a famous Texas rapper. He's gonna be there. Trenere, Trenere is from the freestyle days and the 80s music. I mean, I grew up listening to her. Um, there's gonna be a whole great lineup of vendors, artists, obviously low riders. It's gonna be a really, really fun event. And I think San Antonio will show up because that is our cultura. Okay, so there's another <laughs> event on your list that I know Stefania is excited about. Yes. And you are taking part in this. So this is the Influencer Paella Challenge. Yes. What does that mean for you? Oh, I have to cook. <laughs> that, was a, that was a big sigh. Yes. But thankfully, I will have the help of my friend, Chef Edward Garcia, who owns Box Street all day in Hemisphere mm -hmm. Park. So Chef Johnny Hernandez has an annual paella challenge every year. All the chefs in San Antonio come together, high school culinary students come together, there's scholarships awarded, really fun challenge. We are going to do an influencer paella challenge next Tuesday at La Gloria Brooks. So they're pairing us with local chefs, putting us to the test and see what kind of paella we can come up with and make together. And then y'all have to come out and support me, right? Cause there's four other people I'm up against and I need some votes, some help. And this is Tuesday at what time? Tuesday from 5 to 8 p.m. So you can come over right after work, join us, check out the new La Gloria if you haven't yet. Beautiful south side venue, new restaurant, it's amazing, but it's gonna be a lot of fun. So How, have ahead. you already been <laughs> brainstorming what your recipe's gonna be, or is this like a top chef situation <laughs> where it's just um, ready, set, go? Me and Chef Ed have talked on the phone, and he has a lot of ideas. I think he is, a little bit of both, likes to plan and then also comes up with some crazy things. Uh -huh. um, so I'm excited to see what we do on Tuesday, but I can't give away any spoilers. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay, but, yep, but I'm good. just curious whether you've also been practicing 
with pie because paella can be a little bit tricky. It's got to be the right temperature. Sometimes the Do rice, the rice is a little mushy. I will say I've eaten a lot of paella in that my is life. The kind of <laughs> that I like. I okay. support that. Um, and it is very hard to actually execute it. So. You'll have to come on Tuesday and find out. You've got a teammate Yay. with chef in his name. You're yeah, good. exactly. It's exactly. going to be a lot of fun. Um, there's a lot of great influencers that are part of the challenge, and they're bringing some of San Antonio's top chefs with us on Tuesday night. And it's free and open to the public, so you can just come and join us. And they will also have discounted tickets for the Paella Challenge next week. Okay, we're excited about that. I Thank you so can much. Come. Sometime. Five yes. to eight. Yes. And good when you're not I working. And even if not, and also save us a plate. Yeah. Yes, right. I will. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Stephanie, as always. I'm me. excited. Y'all have a great weekend. You Thank too. Thank you. You too. We'll be right back. So this is pretty cool. A new study in the JAMA Network Open is, again, emphasizing the importance of kids getting enough sleep. But this time, researchers say they figured out exactly how much sleep they need. They say it's a relative number, not concrete. Now, looking at 100 kids in New Zealand, scientists use the time, the time that each child normally went to bed as a reference point, then had them try going to sleep an hour later and an hour earlier. And they found that when kids went to bed an hour later, they typically woke up 18 minutes later. So that means that 39 minutes is the most amount of sleep that they can lose how, from however long they usually sleep without having to make up for it. But researchers are also pointing out that any amount of lost sleep resulted in a decline in their well-being. Well, you know, duh. I heard Caskey over in the Weather Center go, what? Which is exactly what I was thinking. I, it's something you know, when you new, can, it's something different. When you conduct this experiment in my house, they go to bed later, hey, they're up earlier. Yeah, this is true on weekends. And, yeah, it doesn't matter. It does not. doesn't matter. It doesn't make sense. Same with us. It's like, mm -hmm. hey, you were up late. Sleep in. Nope. I think it's that child mentality of like, well, the sun's up. I need to be up too, right? Yes. That's yes. always true. the case. Yep. Mm -hmm. And this weekend, if kids are wanting to get outside. Ooh, so, for some reason, a soccer, soccer ball, ball just rolled by. But <laughs> 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 Maybe play soccer. Why not? going to be a little muddy and cool out there and damp. 58 right now. We're going to drop down to 53 at 10 p.m. Tomorrow morning, 37 degrees. Now, these are morning temperatures. Sunday, only near 40 at sunrise. Monday, 37. And get ready for some damp mornings this weekend. Not ideal for those morning bike rides, those long jogs or taking your dogs out. Actually, the afternoons will be a little bit better. And by the way, those temperatures, they do rebound, but not until the middle of next week. We'll talk about afternoon highs and time out the next few batches of rain in just a bit. Creating a buzz today, Disney Plus debuting the new documentary Bono and the Edge, a sort of homecoming with David Letterman. The film is part documentary, part travel adventure with a lot of music. U2's frontman Bono and lead guitarist The Edge take viewers on a musical and personal journey. The two also reveal their writing process and discuss their legacy. Now, late night icon and comedian Dave Letterman serves the so-called tour serves as a so-called tour guide. In the film, he says that he was amazed to witness the duo's creative force. Bono and The Edge revisit some of their biggest hits during the film and also interviewing process. And by the way, this is streaming right now. Okay, man versus beast cowboy style, style on Interstate 40 in North Carolina. A runaway cow was roped by a trio of brothers on horseback. Happened on Monday. This here cell phone video of one of the brothers with a lasso in hand chasing the cow who is able to get the rope around the cow. State troopers and two semi trucks had to hold back traffic on the interstate as the brothers charged in on horseback. Turns out the brothers were the perfect crew for the job. All three are champion team ropers with the state, country and world titles under their belts. With large buckles, I assume. There were several close calls, but everyone here went home safely. Right, so it has a happy ending. An Australian surfer is in the Guinness World Records for the longest surf session. Blake Johnson caught more than 570 waves in almost 40 hours. The former pro surfer took on the enormous physical and mental challenge for two important and personal reasons. Jeez, well, he said that he did this to raise money for the Chumpy Pullen Foundation for Youth Mental Health. 
and also to honor his late father, who took his own life 10 years ago. The former pro surfer was attempting to raise $250,000 for that foundation. Now, to understand just how long he was surfing, the previous record was 30 hours and 11 minutes. And again, he did this for 40 hours. Yeah, that Incredible. is insane. Wow. Kasky, weren't you going for some sort of Guinness World Record for thermometer? Working on it, yeah. Working on yep, it, so okay. Working on it. it takes a while to get all submitted I knew and there was accepted. And something cooking up. It's kind of costly, too. So I've been working with Morgan's really? Wonderland. Yeah, it's been on hold for a little bit, but just because of some just little details. Well, we're, it, keep, we're keeping the conversation going. I want that in my resume, though. <laughs> oh, yes, of course you do. Guinness all right, so let's holder. talk about, so when we had our guest on, Stephanie, we were talking about all the things that are going on this weekend. So from tomorrow, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, just bundle up, I guess, right? Yeah, you still go outside, especially in the afternoons, just dress like it's January and February. Dress like it's winter outside, then you'll be okay. Cold rain tonight through tomorrow morning, another cold rain Sunday morning, by the way. And yeah, a few flakes in spots mixed in with the rain late tonight, early tomorrow morning, just cold and damp throughout the weekend. Take a look at our rain chances this evening through tonight into tomorrow. Eight o'clock, 10%. Midnight, we're up to 40%. By 6 a.m., we're 70 percent. So that rain ramping up and becoming more widespread through the night. Here's the setup. We've got some energy moving through North Texas in this westerly flow aloft coming off the Pacific, and it's got some extra moisture with it and some energy that's already starting to kickstart some showers west of Del Rio, west of Eagle Pass. This is all going to develop and move eastward as we go through the night and a band of rainfall moderate somewhat heavy at times is likely to develop and it should be about 70 miles wide. Now the future cast shows it's setting up over the hill country and San Antonio. Keep in mind this could, you know, push displace north or south, you know, 25 miles or so once it sets up, just something to keep in mind. So even though Pearsall and La Prior are looking dry here at 2 a.m., there's the chance that this could creep farther south than expected. Bottom line though, where we see some of the more moderate rain set up, we could actually get some cooler temperatures with that and some wet snowflakes mixed in. So a lot of colors on this feature cast, but whenever you see these purples and blues, it's an indication that the computer's even thinking yeah, some wintry precipitation, some wet snow mixing in. Again, not a big deal. This is nothing to get worked up about. No travel impacts with any snow mixed in with the rain. But I do think even some of the north side of San Antonio, northern Bear County, will see some wet flakes around sunrise tomorrow morning, even up until about 9 a.m. Overall, though, it's just going to be a cold rain. I know we have that four letter word involved here, the snow, right, that uh, you've heard throughout the week. But now, not a big deal. Uh, maybe a little bit of a frosting on some grassy surfaces in the hill country. That's it. And by tomorrow afternoon, it's all coming to an end and we'll just have the low clouds in place. Again, hill country, a stray and brief frosting on some grassy surfaces. Wet roads, not white roads. That's the key, wet roadways. So no travel impacts here. This is just a, ooh, gee whiz, look at that kind of situation. Let's talk temperatures right now, 50s, near 60. 56 Holotus, 59 Stinson, 60 in Divine, 56 in Bulverde. Tomorrow morning, we start the day at 37, especially where we get some pockets of heavier rain. Temperatures will be a bit cooler. So 37 degrees in the morning, even above freezing in the hill country. Don't worry about pipes or uh, any plants. We should be okay, really. And then by noon, we're at 45 degrees with the rain tapering off into the afternoon. Maybe a glimpse of sunshine at 50 degrees. So outdoor events tomorrow afternoon, yeah, just Dress warm and be prepared for the chill in the air. And we're looking at a high of only 48 in Castorville, 50 in Converse, Seguina, New Braunfels, making it to 52. Sunday morning, some scattered light rain, not as heavy, not as widespread, not accumulating as much. I mean, we could see a half to three quarters of an inch tomorrow morning from that cold rain. But another chilly day, 40 in the morning, 52 in the afternoon. Monday, really no improvements, 48 the high. By Tuesday, we're back in the 60s, and then we're talking 70s as we get into next week. You know, something to keep in mind here. We're going to be above freezing, even in the hill country, but it can still, snow can still fall through above freezing air. It's just a representation of how much colder it is above us. Got it. Okay. White rain. White rain, that's All what right. it is. The impacts of rain looks like snow. Thank exactly. you. And we'll be right back after this. Looks like.
A San Antonio event is empowering girls and bringing together some inspiring voices in workshops. Tiffany Huerta spoke with participants at this year's Girls Empowerment Summit, and they share what issues and topics they care about. They're just really excited to learn and engage and embrace everything that's coming their way from the mentoring hour to learning about the professions that they can become. Dozens of girls from across San Antonio attended the fourth annual Girls Empowerment Summit today at the Neighborhood Place, a community center on the west side. The two-day event includes a panel discussion, conversation with mentors, and a space for girls to express themselves. An issue that's really important to me is equal opportunities for girls, especially the ones that are at economic disadvantage. What's important for me is to see girls succeed and not to lead out their emotions, but to know root causes of things so that they know how to um, effectively function in real life. The event focuses on different topics, including positive body image, self-care, and social media Awareness. Community members excited to be back in person after being virtual the last two years. This is the first time that the girls get to be around one another and be with their mentors. Mental health is always the biggest issue. So going from being in home, being in front of their computer, to actually being able to engage and connect with girls that they wouldn't otherwise be able to connect with, this is going to make all the difference in their confidence and their self-esteem. Tiffany Huertas, KSAT 12 News. Looks like we're going to get another little boost in the aquifer. That's nice to see it needs it. I mean, it's up a little bit today, but we're still 34 feet below the March average. Cold rain tonight and tomorrow morning. Then again on Sunday morning, cold all weekend, low 50s. And we'll see you on the night beat.